Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord give you peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I don't know how many you now present have been there already 17 years ago outside, outdoor, when there was the ordination of uh, me as bishop. Those who were present, they may remember that after the laying of the hands through the main consecrator, Cardinal Seppe, there was a other rite, of course, the consecration prayer. And during that consecration prayer, there were two priests holding the gospel book like a roof over my head, expressing in this rite that the bishop is put under the word of God. And he has to be the mouthpiece of God, the word of God. And that is wonderfully expressed, basically also in today's scripture readings. And I want to stress these points, also because it's for you and for me, a basic truth. First of all, we heard from the book of Deuteronomy, as Moses speaks about the future prophet who will come, one taken out of the people and who will be raised up as prophet like Moses from the own brothers. And then it is said from God, I will put my words into his mouth and he shall tell them all I command him. I will put my words into his mouth. And later it is said clearly, every prophet who is telling something he has not been first told by God is basically a liar, and he deserves to be killed. They were very sharp in the language of the Old Testament. So be a mouthpiece of God is the first thing of a prophet. But that requires the listening. And that is for each one, be he a prophet, be he a bishop or a priest or every faithful. First of all, we have to be listeners to the word of God. Only then we can properly speak. And that is true not only in our relationship to God, it is equally true in our human relationship. I think the healing of relations starts most of the time with listening to the other one before we speak. And we may also speak differently when we are first listening. It's true in our relationship with God. Our prayer will change if we are not start, starting with our words, but when we are starting, we are listening to him. In the Gospel reading, we have Jesus, who is starting his uh, public activity. We heard it already last Sunday. But the effects of that, and there it is said, his teaching made a deep impression on them, on the people, because unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. And definitely, his word is covered by his belonging to God and coming out of God. Because he, to take the word again, is the mouthpiece of God the Father among us, among the disciples. Here is a teaching that is new and with authority behind. And this, of course, led to the question, who is this man? We are still in the reading of the God, Mark's Gospel in the first chapter. And the whole Gospel of Mark will lead us step by step to the final revelation which amazingly will be given in the weakest moment 
of Jesus Christ. After the crucifixion, when Jesus is already dead, the secret will be revealed by a pagan, the centurion, who says, Truly, this man was God's son. And we are led through the Gospel of Mark to this point that we too can say at the end, Truly, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And from this moment on, the disciples now are entitled to take over the task of Jesus Christ, but not to invent something, but to be the mouthpieces of Jesus, the risen, uh, ex, uh, risen Lord, who has, see, is sitting now at the right hand of the Father. And that is equally true for each one of us who in one way or in the other is mandated to continue the task Jesus Christ has lived among us. And that definitely requires, first of all, listening to the word of God and then to transmit the message. We are not called to tell you stories. We are called to bring over the word of God, the word of healing, the word of salvation given in Jesus Christ. And that, of course, we can't do out of our human qualities. It requires the presence and the activity of the Holy Spirit. Nobody can say truly Jesus Christ is Lord unless in the Holy Spirit. St. Paul told, tells us that. And Jesus is speaking about that even in, already in the Gospel according to John, when he says, when he comes the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. And that is a promise given to his disciples who are mandated, committed to continue his work. And that, I repeat it, requires that we first of all are listeners of the word of God and then we can echo it. By the way, it's interesting that this word echo is still kept in the word catechesis or catechists. And that means each one who is in this ministry of catechesis, he is the one who has to give echo of the word of God and nothing else. Very important that we keep that in mind. And finally, I wish to come to St. Paul again, but what we heard in the first reading, which means that we as individual faithful and also those who are mandated by a ministry like a bishop or a priest have to be First of all, devote ourselves to the Lord's affairs. And that's not always easy, because we are very busy with many other things. As St. Paul says, with worldly things, equally important, but not the most important. And he says that we should give us undivided, give undivided our intention to the Lord. And even saints have experienced that it was not always so easy. I have, uh, I think, in other occasion already referred to St. Teresa of Avila, who was a very busy contemplative woman. She traveled around uh, Spain with the task to reform the Carmelite order. And then at a certain moment, it was simply too much. And she complained before God. 
and said, look what is happening. Eh? And then she got the advice from God, Teresa, take care of my affairs and I will take care of yours. It was a reminder that we shouldn't think that we can make it ourselves. First of all, we have to take care of the affairs of God. And then he will also take care of ours. And that is important also in my task as bishop, that I take the time, give priority to God, and only then I can humbly hope that God will take care of my affairs, which are not always easy to be resolved. Teresa, or Paul, or put your own name, take care of the affairs of God, and he will take care of yours. My dear brothers and sisters, on this occasion also I wish to express my gratitude to all of you for your prayers, for your loyalty to the bishop in this difficult time also, not only because of the pandemic, but what's going on worldwide in the church and in the political world. Thank you for keeping me in your prayers, and I assure you that you are kept in my prayers every day. May the Lord truly lead us the right way that one day we will be with him in the glory of God, because that's the goal we have to reach.